So at the beginning of this video, I'm going to have to uncharacteristically explain not what I'm going to talk about, but rather what I'm not really here to talk about. This video is not about atheism. Despite what the title says, I'm not here to talk about Zargon of Akkad, or Noel Plum, or Richard Dawkins, or Penn Jillette. This video is about hacks. Now, of course, some people might be unfamiliar with this term, although it's fairly commonly used in creative circles. People might be wondering uh, what a hack is and, and where do hacks come from? So a hack is somebody who is unoriginal, uncreative, has no ideas of their own, but has noticed the success of some other artist or some other thinker and has set aside essentially trying to copy their forms, regardless of whether or not they even really understand what made the original great. This sort of sets them aside from imitators or latecomers to a genre. Imitators might not be the most original of all people, they might not have any really fresh ideas or any fresh approaches, but they understand what they're trying to imitate. They have an understanding of the craft and what really brought value to the endeavor to begin with and how it can be procured in a way that's more or less faithful to what made the original itself, what made the original something that people actually liked. Hacks have none of this understanding of what they're trying to copy, and, and most of the time they have zero self-awareness to boot. And in the past several months, have I ever come in contact with a group of hackish thinkers? Now, I suppose here I have to back up. Uh, as many people who watch my channel know, I typically do not have a large interest in atheist or atheism. I consider it to be a declining demographic force, a fading intellectual fad, and the whole concept of atheism in and of itself is just not very interesting because at the end of the day, it's a non-idea, and I don't care about non-ideas. I just care about ideas. But thanks to a rather interesting live stream I was drawn into with Malthy Buddha and several other people, I found myself reconsidering my engagement with the atheist community. And I thought that there might be something to be gained by reaching out, getting discussions going, kind of going over the same theistic versus atheistic arguments, and to see how our approaches to civilization and our current historical moment are similar and are different. And so to accomplish this, I made a rather snarky call-out video based on just a smattering of different atheists I watched. I kind of returned to the old favorites, TJ the Amazing Atheist, Armored Skeptic, Thunderfoot, just to see what they were talking about. Just to come to grips with what atheism has been discussing in terms of religion. And I, of course, I made a sort of sarcastic repost in which I effectively invited anyone in the atheist community to come on my channel for a live stream. Not just about whether God exists. Everyone knows that conversation's been had many times, but about the positive view of the world, the positive view of metaphysics, the positive view of epistemology, the positive view of ethics, and to see how these positive opinions that atheists happen to have, and the positive opinions that theists like myself happen to have, how they differ. And I started out making it very specific that I did not want to have a conversation about negative beliefs. I did not want them to explain to me for the 15th time that atheism is a lack of belief. I, I just, I don't care about non-beliefs. But boy, was I ever disappointed with the response to this video. In the comment section of a video explicitly about discussing positive views on the world, filled up with atheism isn't a belief, atheism isn't a belief, atheism isn't a belief. And you can see the same thing on Twitter. People were just repeating this. Oh, we don't have to have positive discussions. We're atheists, and atheism is just a lack of belief. It got to such a ridiculous extent, I even wrote out a dialogue that satirized how a conversation between one of these new atheist bloggers or Twitter users and myself would go, with me asking about positive views on the world and them acting like atheism was a lack of belief excused them from even answering questions that required positive answers. And even after this tweet, even in response to this parody of them making this argument, I got again and again, atheism is just a lack of belief. Atheism is just a lack of belief. Atheism is just a lack of belief. Again and again. Like baying sheep, they could not stop just repeating this mantra. And what was so funny is they were so eager to have this conversation. They were so eager for me to march out and go, I'm a Christian. I'm going to convert you atheists. And then they could repeat their little line about atheism being a lack of belief and how I had the burden of proof. And then they could 
play the same game that they've been playing since 2008 over and over again with the exact same effect. And so, like, Pavlovian dogs, they were just coming to me, repeating these arguments, even though it was not even pertinent or germane to the question I asked. It was the exact opposite response I was trying to elicit. They didn't care. This was the conversation they were ready to have. And it didn't stop with commenters and Twitter users. I even got YouTubers like Bionic Dance and Deconverted Man making entire videos. Essentially, that boy down to, oh hey, this theist wants to have a conversation about our positive ideas. Doesn't he know that atheism is just a lack of belief? Yeah, I know you think atheism is just a lack of belief, but does that absolve you from having any positive views of the universe? Is your mind just characterized by pure negation? Is there nothing more you can possibly discuss other than going on these little repetitive mantras? And of course, I invited both Bionic Dance and Deconverted Man onto my channel for a live stream. But every time I sent out the invite, via a response on their YouTube videos, I got kind of a deer in the headlight reaction to them, as if they didn't even understand what I wanted to discuss because they were atheists and atheism is just a lack of belief. The entire endeavor was futile. And so after about two weeks of this, I was basically ready to put down the project. But then, uh, very coincidentally, two things happened. A vlogger I had never heard of before called Godless Cranium made a challenge to Christians that they should put forward some aspect of their own thought as religious people that couldn't be replicated by secular society or by the atheistic mind. And the larger YouTuber, Logic, made a response video, strangely enough, to a live stream that my friend Chris from Missing the Mark had with the Escaping Atheism team, or as I think they're called now, Red Pill Religion. Now, in both of these atheist responses to people who are my online friends, I saw a very, very common thread. And again, it was this position of pure negation, this idea that uh, atheism as a lack of belief, as something that needs to be demonstrated, as something that does not have any burden of proof, was sort of an implicitly a, a more honorable position. And indeed, these two vloggers, from their much better elocution and better production values, I could see had a much sharper and more polished argument. And so I kind of, you know, took it upon myself to think more about my initial challenge. And so I decided more or less that um, I needed to address the question properly about why pure negative positions had problems with them and my journey away from new atheism, away from... The idea that you know, we could erect a standard and simply, you know, if the burden of proof was not met on certain questions, we had to essentially answer those questions with a no or a hard I don't know. Now, of course, this video uh, eventually resulted in, in a restatement of a lecture I gave to a atheist philosophical society called the Cult of Confidence. And I sort of, you know, added more examples and included some animations so that it would be easier for a general audience to follow and, and see the lines of my thought. And of course, because I have my own style that seems to be, you know, very averse to brevity. This ended up being 40 minutes long and in quite a, a time-consuming project for somebody who's uh, busy with work otherwise. But while I was in the process of making this rather subdued and more or less polite and explanatory video about epistemology, I was able to act as sort of a spectator for how the dialogue of Godless Cranium and Logic worked out between them and other theist channels online. And, ah, oh my god, if ever I thought a quick tongue and high production values correlated with additional honesty, I was sorely disabused of it by watching how this particular conversation played out. I'll start with the conversation between Godless Cranium and Mauritian Struggle first. My friend Mertian Struggle was kind enough to take Godless Cranium up on his initial proposition, which was, initially I thought the proposition was slightly vague, but you know, Mertian attempted to give an answer and took 20 minutes to write out a fairly well thought out argument about what he thought a religious point of view could give to a thinker, and then subsequently a society. But after this rather cordial response was made, Godless Cranium goes into full refutation mode. This is what he had been waiting for. The initial video invitation wasn't an invitation to a conversation. He wanted to have material that he could repost off of. And so sure enough, right off the gate in his response to Mauritian's answer to his question, he chides Mauritian for using 20 20 minutes to answer an incredibly complex question, and then accuses them of not even answering the initial question, even though Godless Cranium's 
question was so vague it could roughly be interpreted in any number of ways. I mean, I want to be fair and charitable to people making response videos. It's really easy to misinterpret some of these language in, in, in a YouTube video. You don't have the ability that you do in a live stream to ask follow-up questions, to get clarification, to understand exactly what they meant by this word or that. So there's necessarily going to be some miscommunication. And just to illustrate you know, how miscommunication is so easy. Godless Cranium can't even get Martian Struggle's name right. He can't even pronounce the name. He can't even go to previous videos and see how people pronounce the guy's name. So we, we, we need to understand right off the bat, misunderstandings and, and, and misstatements of words, they're part and parcel of the response video format, but not that he cares. Because it's very apparent in Godless Cranium's response to Mershon that he has no intention to engage. He, he just wants to mock and grandstand. It, you know, Mershon makes several arguments and he, he, he references f philosophers. And Godless Cranium is just... I don't, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but he's just not understanding what Mertian is trying to get across. And if that's not enough, for the stuff that touches on mathematical theory and the incompleteness theorem, of which I've talked extensively about on my channel, he brings in another YouTuber who's similarly not qualified and does not seem to have read any of the history of this type of thought to further misunderstand Mertian's response video. And at the end of this, they're just reinforcing each other in this incredibly indignant video. I mean, by the end, they, they look like they're so put upon by what Mershon is trying to explain. I mean, this is a video response that they asked for. They solicited this video, and, and they act like Mershon just keyed their car, and they're explaining to him how much he damaged their lives. I mean, to my mind, the indignation they have is totally fabricated. But just going forward, Mershon tries to clarify again in a, in a live stream. And then today, another response video, this time even more indignant. These people, they, they sound furious. They, they sound like this guy is like killed their cat or something and they accuse him of wasting their time and 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 purposely misunderstanding him and any number of things and of course in all these atheist videos there's a constant insinuation that the person they're talking to is stupid and can't understand and and is ridiculous and you know it's all done in this overblown over the top kind of uh, voice that communicates maximum amount of umbrage and oh my god i just i could hardly get through the series of videos and all the while i was just looking on wondering why don't they just do a live stream? They could clarify what they actually meant. I mean, in a response video format, you only get one go at it. You get to say what you want to say, and then the other person has to listen. He has to, you know, figure out what you mean by the particular words you chose, which could have been chosen for dramatic effect. And in that, there's a huge amount of area for misunderstanding. But, you know, in a live stream, someone says something, they don't know exactly what you mean by that. You go, okay, can you define that? And then, you know, 10 seconds and the clarification is made. And for people who, who may not do YouTube, I mean, these response videos, especially the kind they're doing with the animation and, you know, the cutaways to, to the character wearing, like, Jedi outfits and, and various different fan art, these are incredibly time-consuming. And that's just not time-consuming for me. I mean, the, the people making these response videos, they literally complain about them being time-consuming to make. And when misunderstanding is just such a large part of the whole endeavor, you have to wonder why they're actually taking this approach. But of course, that that's just the tip of the iceberg, because at the exact same time, uh, the, the very large YouTuber, Logic, was, was centering his sights on missing the mark. One of my online friends by the name of Christopher. Now, in a really, really weird move, Logic, a YouTube channel with close to 100,000 subscribers, decided to do a response video to a live stream of a variety of channels that have close to 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 subscribers between them. And again, like in typical form, Logic looks at this conversation, acts like it's directed at him, and carries this incredible umbrage as if, you know, the escaping atheism team and missing the mark left this live stream video outside of Logic's house with a flaming bag of dog shit right on top of it. These are small channels talking about Logic literally had to go out of his way to look at this video and find it and do a response video. Now, I, I had a lot of trepidation when, when watching this particular video by Logic. I'm sure most people who watch my channel know that I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, I'm a theist. They probably would assume that I would be watching it naturally expecting to come out on Max Kolbe and Missing the Mark side and, and denouncing Logic for being an atheist. But I, I actually have approach the video much more neutrally than a lot of the fans of my channel might imagine as 
people know I've had my disagreements with Max Kolbe and then the rest of the um, escaping atheism type channels. Uh, I've I've considered them in the past of being a little bit rash, and while I agree with their fundamental points, oftentimes I think that the ardor and the way they say things leads to a lot of sloppy statements, leads to a lot of misunderstandings, and oftentimes creates more heat than light, as they say. So when Logic had a problem with something that was said in this live stream, I thought, you know, maybe there, they, maybe he has a point. Maybe someone said something that wasn't quite thought through all the way, and, you know, maybe Logic has a point. But once more <laughs> just let down again I mean, not only did logic use the classic you know, lack of belief negation has the presumption of truth therefore i win by default unless you meet some standard of evidence that's impossible for this type of question to be answered with it became apparent even for someone who hadn't watched the original live stream that logic was cutting these videos up it was it was suspicious in the first response video that logic made to this particular live stream but as missing the mark uh, in turn made a response video pointing out some of the misinterpretations and misunderstandings that Logic made. And as Logic persisted in making yet another response video to this live stream, it became incredibly clear that Logic was cutting up clips of people talking, taking things out of context, misinterpreting how comments were directed in order to create the image of this idiotic and asinine Christian group of people talking about ideas they didn't fully understand. And so even though I wasn't done with my own video, I tweeted this out, uh, saying that this was incredibly dishonest, and I got a response from Logic on Twitter. And of course, that's when the shitstorm started. Because when you interact with a YouTuber as large as Logic, you don't just interact with him. You interact with his fans. And, you know, he retweeted it. I made the clarification that all I was looking for was some way to figure out his interpretation of missing the Mark's words and how he came to characterize their meaning. And one of Logic's fans compared me to Steve Shives, to which I simply replied that, we would know who was the most like Steve Shives based on who was the least willing to have a conversation. And of course, Logic did not like even the insinuation that he might be compared to Steve Shives because he had no intention of ever continuing the conversation. Every time I offered him a live stream to clarify his thoughts, he threw it back in my face and demanded that I make a response video. And given the fact that I was complaining about the fact that he'd intentionally misinterpreted several response videos, I wasn't really about to continue the cycle. Again, clarification is best in a live format. And on and on it went, with Logic acting more and more like an asshole. And to some degree, I think, in order to try to encourage me to block him, so he had some kind of plausible excuse to get out of the interaction with me. Because it became very, very, very apparent that Logic had no ability to defend his own ideas inside an environment under which clarifications could be made, under which objections could be launched, in some format where snark wouldn't have full reign, and where creative editing couldn't be used to misinterpret and misplay back the ideas of his opponents. At one point, Logic even admitted that he was intentionally wasting my time with the hopes that I'd go away and block him. And that's pretty much the point where I lost interest in the conversation. And now, uh, today, I, I turn on my computer only to see that Logic has made, that's it, part three of a response video to a live stream that happened two months ago. The person who's unwilling to do a live stream with any of his detractors in this conversation, has made over an hour and a half of edited, costumed response videos to a live stream that wasn't even addressed at him that took place months ago. And all the while, he's complaining in the response videos about how much, oh my god, this is, this is so much time, I can't believe I have to respond to these arguments, I don't believe, I'm so busy, and I can't believe you're forcing me to make these explanations to you, I'm a busy guy, and oh, the, the time, and how could you be wasting my time in my busy day to, to, to condescend to these terrible arguments and correct them. He could have had clarification and correction instantaneously in 20 minutes, as opposed to spending hours and hours and hours of, of concocting dramatic and affected poses in front of a green screen and Editing the, and editing a response video together over a meaningless live stream that wasn't even directed towards him. And this, of course, brings me back to my original topic of conversation, and that is hacks. 
unoriginal and thoughtless derivative work with no content and no reason to exist other than to try to copy the form of a more successful production. In this case, I think we we're really looking at that template of the Atheist YouTube channel. And that template comes from the response video. Now, I think the originator of the whole Atheist template were two figures. The first one was Christopher Hitchens, a very well-spoken, worldly man who, despite some amount of intellectual dishonesty, was not nonetheless able to engage with people and verbally express himself in live settings in very, very effective ways. The, the second figure I think this template's really based on is Jon Stewart, uh, the, the master of the political comedy show. And of course, Jon Stewart's form was, was always to take clips from the news or from his opponents or from alternative figures in the media, play them out of context, and then act indignant and exasperated to comedic effect. And to some degree, due to his other interactions in the political sphere, Jon Stewart, although perhaps ultimately destructive to discourse in America, did create a figure of someone who is genuinely interested in policy and communication with his opponents. And it's the merging of these two forms that really create the atheist response video. You take something that you want to critique, you examine it out of context, and then you have all the time in the world to edit yourself doing sort of exasperated rhetorical flourishes, capturing the linguistic verbosity of Christopher Hitchens and also the snarky umbrage of Jon Stewart in a way that's simultaneously funny and also makes your audience feel very intelligent for agreeing with you. And I think this forum was effectively mastered by people like TJ the Amazing Atheist, And but what we see now in the Atheist YouTube is just an insane desire to keep this form of communication going well past its effectiveness at actually communicating an idea or advancing public discourse. You see, initially in YouTube's history, the internet was replete with really, really stupid apologists, and frankly, a lot of the Christian and theological content on YouTube was really not very well educated. You could take a five-minute clip of some pastor in Arkansas and probably capture most of the substance in that one clip without too much trouble and make fun of it to your heart's content. That pastor probably wouldn't be savvy enough to make a response video, to make an intellectual counter critique, or even to have a large following that would really require you have more interaction with the ideas he was promoting. It was safe, but the world isn't like that anymore. There are actually intelligent Christian and theistic voices online. And making little five-minute response snarks at their own content ideas isn't going to cut it. At some point, you're actually going to have to engage with us in a discussion, in a place where your ideas can be challenged independent of your ability to intentionally misinterpret what people are saying. And here I want to finish this video with a direct message to Logic, Inane Dragon, and Godless Cranium. It's time to demonstrate exactly what role you have in the internet that actually cares about ideas. It's time to show whether you have any ability to actually engage with your critics, aside from simply misinterpreting them. It's time to have a discussion. Not a response video, not an endless conversation in a character-limited format where you can endlessly snark and retweet to the thunderous applause of an audience who doesn't even understand the context of the conversation going on. What I'm asking for is a dialogue, a dialectic. Don't bother trying to make a response video to this. Don't bother cramming yourself into that three-piece suit that doesn't even really fit you anymore. Don't bother creating new avatars of your icon dressed as Star Wars characters. Don't bother finding little five-minute clips you can take out of context so you can mock them in front of a green screen. Let's have a conversation. Let's actually discuss the ideas you are addressing in your video and see how your positive view of the universe may matches up with another positive view. The other atheist thinkers that you have obviously modeled your careers on did this frequently. It was part of being an honest intellectual in society. It was part of being somebody who actually cared about finding out true things, of advancing human knowledge, of advancing human striving. But, you know, I am not your boss. I am not your father. I am not any person who has authority over you. You're free to continue on your entertaining and probably very lucrative YouTube careers being entertainers that make their audience feel smart while really offering nothing in the way of ideas. You're free to continue making videos where you spend eight or nine hours constructing responses to out-of-context quotes, where you act indignant that a 
misinterpreted statement is wasting your time when you could have spent five minutes clarifying it with the statement's original author in order to understand what he actually meant. You can keep on doing that. Sure enough, there are tons of people on the internet who only want to feel validated, who only are interested in that little feeling that they're smarter than whoever the person is who you're mocking. But without a genuine attempt to find actual dialectic and dialogue, without a genuine effort to engage your opponents in an actual playing field where responses can be had and where larger ideas can be explored. You bear absolutely no relationship to the thinkers and skeptics that you aspire to be. Your entertainers, your showmen, your spectacles, and to the extent that you make any pretense to have ideas, to challenge societal notions, to move forward human thought, you are only hacks.